What do Marvel, Stan Lee, and Back Bacon have in common? Give up? Fan Expo Canada! So grab a bowl of poutine while the intro plays and get ready for some Watcher wonderfulness. And if you're not watching the Watcher, then you best have an excuse. The Watcher, yeah, it's always watching you. Expo Canada tore through Toronto this weekend and comic-loving Canucks came out of the maple woodwork. The Mighty M was there with panels on the latest Marvel Now news, breaking into comics, the Marvel way, the future of Marvel's X-Men and Avengers vs. X-Men and its fate on the galaxy. And here to give us the DL is Marvel's own correspondent, live from Canada, Ben Morris. Ben? Thanks, Lorraine. As you can see, I am here in Canada where Fan Expo Canada has just wrapped up. We've got all the latest Marvel news coming out of the convention, so uh, let's talk about what it's all about, eh? <laughs> a little Canadian humor for you there. So, we discussed a new direction for Dark Avengers, amongst other things, including Jason Latour taking over as the writer of Winter Soldier, a new Morbius series by Joe Keating and Rich Elson, which I'm very excited about, and also Eisner award-winning artist Ramon Perez is going to be joining the creative team of Wolverine and the X-Men. So, as you can see, some really exciting stuff going on here in the Great White North. Uh, ben, it's, it looks like it's snowing there. Isn't it summer? Look, Lorraine, it's Canada, okay? Things are... Back to you, Lorraine. Fair enough. I am sure you were in Canada. Yes, I am totally in Canada. I'm in Canada. I'm in Canada. Thank you, Ben. Check out more breaking news from Fan Expo Canada now on Marvel.com. Were you guys on the scene at Fan Expo or are you gonna be at Dragon Con next weekend? Show me your tweets. Send me all of your marvelous moments from the cons at Lorraine Sink on Twitter. And you guys, speaking of Canadians, big movie news. Production is already underway for a film about everybody's favorite Canadian, the Wolverine, starring Hugh Jackman, who reprises his role as the old Knucklehead. head. The film is currently being shot in Australia under the direction of James Mangold of 310 to Yuma and Girl Interrupted, from a script by Christopher McQuarrie and Mark Bomback. And we have got the inside scoop on the official film synopsis. Based on the celebrated comic book arc, the Wolverine finds Logan the eternal warrior and outsider in Japan. There, Samurai Steel will clash with Adamantium Claw as Logan confronts a mysterious figure from his past in an epic battle that will leave him forever changed. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, I added that little last part for flair. The Wolverine hits theaters July 26th of 2013. So what do you guys think of this new Wolverine flick? Tell me down below in the comments section. And now it's time for the watch list where I give you my top picks for books hitting comic stores and the Marvel Comics app this Wednesday, August 29th. First up, Journey into Mystery number 642, part one of Everything Burns, the Mighty Thor crossover event by Kieran Gillen with art by Carmine Dijon Domenico. Burn, baby, burn. Trust me, it is worse than a disco inferno. An epic battle is on the horizon as trouble brews between Vanaheim and Asgardia when the world tree catches on fire. We can be sure that Surtur has something up his sleeves. Next up, Wolverine and the X-Men number 15 by Jason Aaron with art by Jorge Molina. Picking up after AVX number 10 at the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, the Avengers and Wolverine's X-Men are working together to stop the Phoenix Force. But the question always remains, which is scarier, an immeasurable planet-consuming firepower of death and rebirth, or dealing with a school full of teenagers? And speaking of Jean Grey students, check out Uncanny X-Force number 30 by Rick Remender with art by Dave Williams. Apocalypse has been kidnapped by Dawkins' newly formed group of bad boys, the Omega family, including Sabretooth, Blob, Mystique, Shadow King, and Skinless Man. And they're about to take him on a road trip where he'll learn some life lessons the hard way. And you thought traveling with your family was bad. Ugh. And now it's time for What If, where we ask ourselves that eternal question. What if? The Wolverine is hitting silver screens again in 2013, but 
What if you could see Wolverine trade one power with any other mutant? And what would it be and why? I think I'd probably give him beast brains or maybe Cyclops' ability to be a jerk. Am I right, you guys? Ooh. Okay, I guess you aren't so much mutations as they are talents. So tell me what you think in the comment section below and watch the next episode to see if your comment was watched on The Watcher. And you guys, special thanks to YouTube commenter Mark is Superman, who answered my question about who would win in a battle, Thor versus Hulk, saying, Thor versus Hulk would be a tight contest, and though I think Hulk will put up one hell of a fight, I still think that Thor would win. The very reason as to why Stan Lee created Thor was to create a character that is omnipotent. Watch Stan Lee's interview about creating Thor. And for comic reference, I point you to Fear Itself, in which Thor owned Hulk. And this was when Hulk had extra Asgardian powers. God of Thunder wins! And as always, you can send me your questions, comments, and expo exposés at Lorraine Sync on Twitter. And you might just get a little love on the show. And you guys, if you love this Watcher tea, you can get your own on WeLoveFine.com. I'll see you guys next time, True Believers. I am Lorraine Sync for Marvel, your universe. And if you're not watching The Watcher, then you best have an excuse. The Watcher, yeah, it's always watching you. Jimmy Woo, Charlie Man, and the Frost. Marvel, your universe.